but um as you guys know i'm trying to keep this car sleeper and oem so everything i'm putting on this car is going to be just oem mazda parts so um and these are my only two non-performance modifications i'm doing to this car i'm a audio guy i like music so what i did was i already started doing this guys but i'm going to show you the other the other part once we get to the car the second half so since i've had some practice doing one side i'm going to do the other side later um in the video so uh, what i'm going to be doing today and i'm going to be replacing my oem um door speakers my rear door speakers right so here are the because i have a select model and the select model comes with the nine bows it's technically a base model with all-wheel drive um and still under deactivation so i have the standard system which is the eight speaker system the bow system comes with um 12 speakers right so on my car there's only eight there's two in the, the rear there's one in each rear door um and then there's one in each front door and then there's also like the tweeters on the pillars and then um i have two kick panel four inch woofers that are underneath the dash all right so i have eight the Bose has 12, so what I'm missing from the Bose, the Bose has um, a, center a center point speaker that's in the center of the dash. Um, and then on, on the sedan model, they have a subwoofer that's in a, the rear deck lid. And then there's two um, speakers on each side of that. So that's where the four extra speakers come from. All right, so on my model, um, it doesn't have any cutouts on the rear lid for the, the subwoofer or the two other um speakers that are back there all the door speakers they're 2.75 inches all right and the bose system they're the same they're the same size but they're bose speakers not the standard ones like you're seeing here all right so all the speakers on the bose are all bose um they're in the same location same size they're just better quality so what i did was um i got me some genuine oem Bose speakers, right? So this is technically the speaker with this these uh this I guess mounting design is only supposed to be for um the center point on CX5, you know, CX9 and then also on the CX9, I believe the door speakers um I'm not 100% sure, but I remember I think the door speakers are actually this design as well. But on my Mazda, as you can see cuz I have a fourth gen the mounting positions are different on here, all right? So they're the same size, they're both 275. All the Bose speakers, um, they're gonna be this size. If I were to upgrade this to the Bose system, it's gonna look like this this size speaker, right? You see the magnet, how much bigger it is? But it'll just have the mounts that are like this. So what they really, they pretty much do, they use this speaker pretty much every, all their platforms. There's gonna be um, this, just about, all of them are gonna have this model of speaker, but in different locations. So in my car, the only location that this Bose speaker comes in is in the center point. On other on other, on other vehicles, um, they'll have these in the center point and on the door speakers, right? Uh, with this mounting location. On mine, the only one that has this mounting, uh, mounting position is on the center point, but they still use the same exact speaker, but just with a different mount uh, to put in the front doors and the rear doors for the, um, for my uh, fourth gen. So you take a look at that speaker depth. They're the same height if you look at them. I, I ripped off the uh, the foam around here, but they're exactly the same height. Um, the only difference is, is there's just a, um, like I said, the mounting and the sensitivity on these are different. So I was really, when I got these originally, I was hoping to get a little bit more bass in my rear um, speakers because these sound so flat. And I was gonna I'll upgrade to these to see if the the base would increase, um, and unfortunately it didn't really increase much. Um, there is it looks like it would when you have them plugged in. This one definitely has more excursion like movement, so you think there would be more base, but the enclosure in the back isn't really closed off. And I'll show you that once we get to it. Um, but there is a bigger magnet, so um, this is a higher power, you know, speaker here. 
this one is a 25 um, RMS um, watt speaker. And apparently there's no rating on this one, but apparently I've been told from other guys is a 30 watt. So they're pretty similar. Um, even though this one is a higher handling um, speaker, the sensitivity is higher. So even at the same, uh, with the same amount of power applied to both, this one is louder. Um, so even though there's not much bass difference, what I do notice is the, clar the difference in clarity. This one plays more crisp, clean, um, high frequency sounds than this one does. This one sounds very flat and muffled um, versus this one, it, you can hear things more clearly, like the high notes, like the pings and all that, the bells and whistles, that comes through a lot more clear on the, the bows than it does on the base model. So I already replaced one door speaker and it does sound more surround sound and clear and crisp. Um, definitely not more bass, but that's okay. I did something else that I'm gonna show you to increase the bass of the bass model without adding in, you know, the center point, which won't really add much, but I just, I, that center point doesn't, it's supposed to, my friend told me it does help a little bit if I put this center point in there, you get a little bit more bass, but honestly, I just don't wanna have to do any wiring. I'm trying to keep things simple, just plug and play. I don't wanna have to people do some custom fabrication for anything, so, um, what I'm gonna do is just show you what I did and it happened by mistake how I increased the bass in the uh, the car. So we're gonna go to the car guys and I'm gonna show you how I mounted this. I only used one screw because this thing is that powerful that it's rattling back and forth and also the door keeps it in place and it's a pretty tight fit. And what I wanna show you is like, this is a really tight fit. So if you're thinking about upgrading um, to a, you know a non OEM speaker, um, three three inches is I wouldn't go bigger than three inches in the rear door um, the front door you might be able to get away with like three and a half inches but then you might have to make a custom mount um, and if we're not gonna make a custom mount and we're just keeping everything in there three you can up these are two seven fives you can upgrade to three inches but you have to make sure the magnet has clearance um, and with this with this um, how the mounts are um, this is further away from the, the speaker. So this mount is actually not centered when I put it in. So it pushes this magnet up against almost one side of the uh, the housings for the speakers. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you um, how much space there is like for the your magnet and stuff inside the housing if you were to, to, to go and upgrade your speaker. So what I'm gonna do is like, so these are both like 275, three inch um, speakers, right? And I, these are cut off because I actually use try to put this in my center point location as a passive radiator to um, to to I guess get more bass. But it actually it worked better just not even having this in because in a center point point spot like I'm going to show you um, it acts as a vent. All right, um, so it was like a ported box. So what I'm going to do is I cut these two off, but I'm going to put this in that spot so you can see how this line if this lines up i don't know yet but we're going to see if like if i screw one of these hole in if the other hole was still there if it would line up so you guys can put in um you know your three inch um, aftermarket speakers in there with no issue because this is like the aftermarket size um cutout that you would be using um not like this um see these don't even like they're not even the same they don't match up the holes don't match up because this one is smaller if you put them together so, but this is what the standard would be. So if this mount, if these mounts were closer, this speaker, speaker would be more centered. So um, I guess if I just hold this to here, it would tell me if they would, they would mount up. And if I'm looking at it, since this is a stock location, it looks like actually this would mount up. So this is the stock speaker. Actually, I guess I didn't even have to screw it in. If I look in there, these would line up and I would be able to do, um, just, I'd be able to bolt both sides in. So if you do aftermarket, it will fit in there. So glad I looked at that just now, cause I don't know why I would just go to the car when I could look at this. But what I need to do is, um, I need to go in there and get measurements to see how big, you know, you know what? I guess I don't even need to do that. What I can do is I'll just measure from the bottom of the speaker um, out to here, so I can tell you. Mm, I just, I guess, I need to see how much it is to close this up. So we'll go in there. Actually, I can measure from here to here to tell you what is the the biggest magnet 
he can fit in there. I don't know. We'll go find out, guys. I'll go to the car because I'm, I'm a hands-on guy. So, all right, let's cut, and I'll probably try to make this shorter. Maybe I won't. But let's go to the car, guys, and we're going to see what kind of speakers, and I'll get some get some measurements for you guys. But as far as I know right now, the depth is in the rear speakers. They're one and a half depth from the mounting down. Um, both of these two speakers are um, two inches in height. So it's about two inches tall overall. The depth of it is two inches. But for as far as mounting, the depth of the mounting is uh, one and a half inches. So let's go, guys. We're going to go and uh, get some measurements for you guys so you can find out what what will fit in those door speakers if you don't want to use the stock ones. All right, guys, as you can see, we got the donut on there because, you know, um, hit a pothole. So the rim is in the trunk. It's a mess in here, guys, right now. So um, I'm doing some other stuff as far as, like, my other exterior mod. Um, but, yeah, hit a pothole, kind of dented the rim up, rim up a little bit. You know, it's a... Yeah, so this tire's done for, but luckily I ordered a new one. So um, you'll see why I have this off in a little bit. I'll come back to this, but obviously it has to do with my tail lights. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this door off and uh, take some measurements, and I'll show you how I took it off. So it's pretty simple to take this door off. You just need to, you know, pry up in here and uh, just pry under here. Get something to get under in there, like a little wedge. And then you lift up, and another little trick I'm gonna try, I haven't tried it yet, I didn't try it on the other door. I'm gonna try to push inboard to let the door release. Um, but in order to take this door off, there are three, just three screws, and then it just pops out. So literally all you have to do is there's, you have to remove this little panel right here, um, right? And there's gonna be a screw here, and a screw here. And then there's one more screw that's under here that you have to remove. So it's just three, and I'll open it up in a second, but just these three screws, and then you can pull this whole door off. And what you wanna do is you wanna pull from here. Um, and then once you get all that off, the door will be hanging on by this. Um, I'm gonna leave it on there because I don't need to take the whole door off. Um, but to, in order to get this whole door off, you have to like pull up back and up push back and up at an angle to get the uh this pulled off you don't you can't pull it straight out or you'll break the little tab in here you need to go at an angle towards this way diagonal and it'll pop off it'll slide out of the the hook that is in so i'm gonna go ahead and put this on the mount and you guys are gonna watch me take off this door Uh, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and grab just anything that won't scratch up your car. I got like a a close a close pin, and uh, I'm just gonna wedge it under here so I can get my fingers in there, and then I'll start prying open. Hopefully this one will slide out too.
Yeah, most of them came out without getting stuck. We just have a couple more. There we go. Doors released. All right. So I got as much as I need off of the door, and I want to show you the tight fit. This one here. So I'm gonna take this off. So if we go over to the door, this is how the door speaker sits in here. All right. So this has a pretty small magnet on it. So if I'm looking in here in this gap between the the magnet and the casing, what I want to do is I want to measure that to see when this is centered. I want to measure that in there to see how big of a magnet can fit behind there. And what it looks like, because of how this isn't flush mounted, it looks like this hole right here, it might be, I'm not sure yet, but it looks like it might be smaller than um, obviously the normal size hole that would fit um, behind a three inch. So. I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and take this out, try to get some measurements for you guys of the hole. I'm gonna try to put the other speaker in there because that is the standard size for aftermarket speakers. Um, yeah, like got that little radiator. So I'll put that in here and show you guys. Since I'm not gonna be able to get a good angle, I just wanna show you. I'm just gonna take out this top screw and then there's a, another screw right in here. I'm just gonna be taking those two screws out and pulling the speaker out okay guys so i was looking at these uh these holes right so this is the, the mounting depth um it's not very deep at all and as you can see it's kind of angled so there might there's like more depth over here than there is here so you have to go with the the smaller in depth um but one thing i noticed um when i was gonna go put this passive radiator that has a stock mounting holes uh position you're gonna have to do some trimming if you want to do um aftermarket speakers because when I go to put the hole over here um, it won't let me line it up completely because there's this tab right here so there's a tab right here that if you're planning on doing aftermarket speakers you're gonna have to be able to cut those two tabs off um, and then if you once you cut those two tabs off this should be able to slide right over the hole in here but like right now it's not letting me go over far enough to get the, the holes lined up but now so even though we're gonna we're we figured out we need to cut the tab um, if we just mount this, right? So say we got this flush in here and it's mounted. If you look, this, like I have this flush, right? Um, let me get this, it's so hard to do this. I'm so not good with the camera. All right, so I have this flush, right? Over the hole. This passive radiator without a magnet looks to be, it's touching. This is touching the back, right? So... I don't even have to measure anymore because just from this being here to that touching all the way to the wall, like there is no space in there. Um, if I measure that depth, that's gonna give me the max amount of depth that a stock speaker can be, or not a spot stock speaker, aftermarket speaker. So this depth right here is as deep as you can have an aftermarket speaker, which is crazy because that's not very deep at all. Um, so if I get my, I have a measuring tape here. So I'm whipped up this measuring tape. Let me go ahead and set it up for like two inches because I know this is not even two inches deep because the speaker's two inches. So if I set this up in here, um, the depth is not, I don't here, let me, hold on. Too much stuff in my hand. Look at the depth on this. It's one and a half inches. So if you have a speaker depth that from the back of the speaker mount, um, it can only go one and a half inches in here with this in, all right? But see how there's these um, nuts in here? There's these three nuts, right? So, I mean, the speaker's still plugged in right there. Um, if I take this off, this probably can be a little bit deeper, but then you lose the, uh, you lose this, which is kind of almost like an insulator and it keeps your, the metal from vibrating if I do plug in the speaker. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can remove that real quick. Um, just with these three little bolts here and see how much more depth we get. Okay, so I took that out 
And now that that's out, there is a lot of room in here. Um, but you lose the insulation that this provides. So I don't know if you guys are worried about road, no road noise and stuff. Um, there might be some extra wind noise, but I mean, there's a lot of depth space. But if you do do this, um, if you do want to like add a bigger speaker, um, it's definitely possible, but you're gonna have to do some some drilling and uh, cause there's, there's, I mean, you'd have to make your own mount. So you could probably fit up to a six inch I would say in here, I can measure for you guys and get that out for you. So if I had six inches, uh, but you always got to remember this is not straight unless you want to cut into this. You could probably do a four inch woofer, no problem. Make your own mount for it and you can go pretty deep. But uh, I'm not going to do all that. That's too much work, too much fabrication, too much measurements. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. Um, the stock speakers apparently are, they don't have as much clearance, so they can probably only do, um, two inches as well. And on the stock speakers is already, um, bare metal in the back. So you can't go further on the stock speaker. So, uh, or on the stock front speaker. So on the front speakers, you're de definitely limited to that one and a half inch depth. Um, on here, you're not limited to that one and a half inch depth. All right. That's if you take this off. So, um, but the total speaker overall, they're like two inches tall. So when you're looking at your measurements, make sure when you're measuring the speaker that um, if it gives you like the top and the bottom, that's the overall depth. Um, that's gonna be about two inches on most spe uh, speakers if they're gonna fit in here. Uh, but one and a half is gonna be from like here where this gray is to the bottom of the magnet, all right? All right, now that I got that back situated and we figured out we can go deeper on there, I'm gonna pull this tab out here because you won't be able to mount the other speaker the same way because the tab doesn't face the same direction on this one it faces down on his this one it faces out so the speaker sits in there like this and that tab is out but on the new one the tab is going to be face down um so this is going to be have to be longer because this is like the length it needs to be for it's facing that way but facing down is going to be needed i'm gonna have to pop this out so I'm go ahead pop this little rivet out over here So that's out. Um, and I guess before I change the speaker out, I want to give you guys a sound test. So I'm going to go in my car and I'm going to change everything down to this back right speaker. And hopefully you'll be able to hear it on this camera. I'm going to put it on the stand. And I want you to just listen for the clarity difference and how this one sounds muffled. And then that one will sound like higher clarity. It might be hard to hear, but I'm going to go ahead and try it anyways. All right, I'll let you guys listen to that. And then we'll switch it. All right, now let's switch this out. See if you can hear the difference. With the pull tab. Now I'm going to add this one in. Just clips right in because it's OEM. All right, so let's start that over.
right, now that that's done, you can just hear like the highs a little bit better on this one. This one's more a flat sound. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this one and I'm gonna show you how I screwed it in. All right, unplug that. All right, now you can come over here. So now all I'm gonna do is after I tested those both out, it's not really a big difference. In my opinion, not really worth the upgrade for $100. You're better off getting a, uh, I mean, if you're gonna use this, this is as best as it's gonna get. But if you're gonna take this out, uh, maybe cut deeper. I mean, you could probably cut this out, you know, that way you can get a little bit, little bit more depth. If that's what you're worried about, it's like speaker depth. You can just literally cut this out in here and you'll be able to do a um, bigger two and a half slash three inch um, speaker back there. So that's all it really requires. If you wanna do bigger, just being able to cut this out. Um, so pretty much all I'm gonna do is, I'm only gonna screw in one hole um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to get pictures of it afterwards, but pretty much I'm just going to take this end and I'm going to face it this way. So I'm going to have the speaker up like this so that way this cable can reach in a proper length. And I'm just going to mount it just like this and then screw just the top in. All right, guys, it's in there pretty snug. I'll literally, I only put this top one in there. Uh, but it'll be all right. But I just wanted to show you that. So it's in there pretty snug and it won't vibrate because it's on this plastic. But I wanted to just show you because of this mount is uh, further out, like the whole mount, uh, the screw hole is further out, placed away from the speaker, how close that clearance is on there. So um, on the actual bows that are for this car, they'll still have that mount. They'll just have the normal mounts. All right. Just so you won't have this tight of a clearance on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I got that in there. So all I'm gonna do is just line up these little, these clips back in these holes. So if these were to, those clips were to get stuck in here, you gotta pop these out and slide them back in here before you put the door back on. But yeah, now I'm just gonna go ahead and put the door on and I'm gonna show you one more thing I did to improve the sound quality besides the two speakers. I mean, cause these cost me, both of these together cost less than a hundred dollars. Uh, you know, so like if you if you go to mix store, you can get two for a hundred if they have their if you use a discount code. Um, do I think it's really worth it? No, but this is as good as it's gonna get for the rear. Um, until you like, you know, have the courage to like cut deeper in there. I just didn't want to cut it, um, but there is more clearance, so I probably should have measured a little bit more for you guys. Um, in there to see like how wide you can get. I guess I could take this back out, but judging by the space, cause this is almost touching here, there is clearance, but not much. So you can probably fit, uh, I would say, cause this magnet is about 50 millimeters, like a 70 inch magnet on the back of there. Um, but like, yeah, the clearance is pretty tight and it does curve down towards the back. right in that easy and now I'm just gonna put my three screws back in big screws go onto the body where the paint's at big black screws Silver screw behind the door. Let's go down here. It's all done. Um, that simple. Just got to put my cover back on here. And that's it. Just slide that back on. Oh, wrong way. 
hard, but that easy. Just snap it back in. There it is. Oh. Slide it in first. I'm not an expert, guys. I'm just, just some guy. He's just out here experimenting with the door. I think that's in. Let me check it. Look at the other door to make sure. But that looks in. Well done, guys. Uh, now we're gonna go do a sound test. And I want to show you one other thing I did um, on the inside. So. This improves my high end back here, so it sounds more crisp back here. Um, but I, what I was really chasing when I was going for this, I wanted more bass. So I'm gonna show you what I did to increase the bass. All right, now that we're back in the inside, I wanna show you, I know it's a little dusty in here. I wanna show you what I did to increase the bass since I don't have the center point, which are those speakers that I actually installed in the rear door speakers. Those are what the center point speaker looks like. Um, and here, there actually isn't anything but a dummy speaker. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this open. If I can do it with my hand. I might have to put this down, but you literally just pop this open, but I'm going to show you what I did. So I just popped this center out of here, right? Um, and notice there's passageways. These passageways somehow connect to the two um, four inch kick panel woofers that are located under here. So one's here and one's under the driver's side and these they're like four inch woofers. And they somehow channel and vent through here, just like a ported subwoofer box. So I took this out. All right. Uh, don't mind this glue I have here because I tried to glue a passive radiator in here um, to like kind of absorb some of the uh, to see if it would like channel some of the bass. Because I noticed when I didn't when I took that, there's a um, a dummy speaker. I'm going to show you in the picture. There's a dummy speaker that goes on here and it was blocking bass. Right. And so when I was a. Uh, planning on I, I some reason i just removed it and i had put this thing back in here well i didn't even put this back in here i just put the cover back on and i noticed the bass was louder so i was like huh interesting the bass is louder with this off but when i had it off the bass kind of sounded like muddy like dirty so i was like okay i'll put a passive radiator in here so i glued that um passive radiator that i used in the back to show you the measurements i glued it on here to see if it would like um, add to and clean up, clean up the base. But what happened was it wasn't a complete seal because there's gaps everywhere. Um, once this is in, even though I sealed this off, there's like gaps all over this, so it couldn't move the passive radiator. So what I did was I just retuned my EQ. So this glue is not supposed to be here. I'm um, just too lazy to take it off. That's just rubber cement. I'll take. Now nah, I'm not even gonna take it off. Um, but pretty much just removing that. Um, the dummy speaker allows extra bass to be vented through here. So that's all you got to do is just remove that dummy speaker. I'll show you in a picture. Um, and just unscrew the two screws and it comes off. And that will just add, that will just take the quality of the bass up a few notches. All right.